Bonjour boys and girls and welcome back to online learning. Now today I've got a really special new segment for you and it's called Art Online. And Art Online is where we're going to focus on a, um, on a very well-known artist. Now that very well-known artist is Van Gogh. Now here's a picture of what Van Gogh looks like. And we've studied Van Gogh before when we've done our Starry Night. We've also done it before when we've done our, some of our sunflowers. I don't know if you can see these pictures behind me. But this is Van Gogh. And he uh, was very interested in art at such a young age. He really found his new love for art at age 16. 16, that's crazy. I know some of your brothers and sisters will be reaching that age soon. Um, and I'm not even 16, I'm older than 16, so he was very young when he began his love of art, um, but what really got him inspired, he left art for a while, he went to a, um, art dealership, but he left that for a while, and then he came back when he was 27, so again, I'm not even 27 years old, he was older than me, when he started creating paintings of his own. So that was when he produced stuff like um, The Starry Night and other famous paintings that your parents will know of, like the big sunflower pot. Um, kind of like these ones. These aren't his, but they are inspired by Van Gogh's art. Now Van Gogh was an artist, such well called an impressionist artist. I don't know if you guys can say that big word. Can you guys say that big word? Impressionist. Now it's a very big word. And what an impressionist artist do is, you know how we sit inside? We sit inside our little art area, our atelier, and um, we do our paintings on tables. Well, uh, impressionist artists, such as Van Gogh, like I just showed you, actually go outside and do their art. So they set up an easel. We call, when you guys paint by yourselves, that's an easel, the big one, when you guys can put two or three of you. Um, but they've got slightly a smaller one that's taller. And they set their easel up and they get their paints out. And so instead of, sometimes we look at a picture, like the Starry Night, and we copy it, right? But instead, Van Gogh would rather um, paint a real life scene. So he goes outside, say to the beach, and instead of drawing a still picture like one of these, he draws real life pictures. So they like to look at the, the light shining from the sun, or even the moon, like he's done in some of his works. Um, but yeah, they like how the light and the whole sky changes colour. So often they will portray that in their works. It's very clever because, you know, we copy a picture and we find that hard sometimes. But imagine, you know, trying to capture a dog that's running around the park. You know, like how hard would that be? Because you'd be like, just sit still, dog, you know. So it's really cool that um, impressionist artists can do this. But in doing this, like I said, trying to paint a dog that's running around in a park is very hard because it's always moving. So artists, so impressionist artists have to keep up. So their paints are often used very thick paint and they do very fast strokes. So it often looks a little messy. See, like you see his face here, his portrait he did himself. It's very, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Oh, it kind of goes. You can see all his wonderful paint strokes. But see how it looks messy? See, our pictures, we kind of make them, we try and make them as smooth as possible. But his ones are very thick, brushed on strokes. So, but that is because most of the time he's doing a scene outside where everything's changing. The wind's blowing, dogs are running, people are walking, you know, so he has to try and keep up. So they're often very quick and you can see all of the strokes, even in this one. You can see all of the brush strokes there, see? So that's what we're going to be focusing on when we do our... We're going to be doing a um, piece of... Well, we're going to be 
trying to copy a piece of Van Gogh's art. Now that piece of art, I thought, because it's springtime, I thought it's called the Blossoming Almond Tree. And I'll show you. I've got one on my, on my laptop. I'll show you what that's like. It's beautiful. You guys probably have seen blossom trees out like this. Um, out when you're walking around with mums and dads. They're beautiful. And they've seen... Oh, they're not seen... They're not too popular over here. But you do see the odd one out and about. I know my neighbour's got one in her yard and it's just beautiful. It's a little bit um, missing the flowers like this one a little bit, but it's still just as pretty. So you can see that one. That's his um, blossoming, it's called an almond tree. Now, this almond tree, he, Van Gogh did this painting because uh, his brother had a baby. And so he was very happy and he's like, oh, you know what? I want to do a painting and I want to mark this occasion. Um, and that's what he did. Now you can see it's very light and bright and happy painting. So I thought that's brilliant for spring. I mean, it, sometimes we feel like it's spring weather here and sometimes, like today, it's very miserable outside. But I thought, what better way of, you know, marking spring than drawing a lovely blossom tree? Um, so we're going to do some lots of mixing of colours. There's not too many colours in here. But there's still, if you look very closely, there is still a lot that a lot of colours that go into this. So we're going to be mixing a lot of colours. Now I um shh, don't tell Linda and Steve picked up some colours from preschool, put them in these little um little containers so I could bring them back home. So I've got green. What colour is that one? Can you see that one? And then I've got yellow black I've also got I've been working on my paintings so I've also got do you know what color that is dark blue and light blue correct so we're going to be mixing with those those colors primarily um but before we do that I have a really cool book that I'd like to show you that just uh, it says little blue and little yellow so next time I'm on uh online art online i'm going to be reading this book before we do lots of mixing because it tells you it's a good little story it says little blue and little yellow are best friends one day they can't find each other when they finally reunite they hug and they hug until they become green but where did little blue and little yellow go so it's all about mixing colors so i thought we'd read that before we get into our painting how's that right well next time you see me on art online um, you will see me reading that book. So I hope you enjoy this segment. Uh, this is only part one of a series. So uh, keep up to date and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. <laughs>